This time we're going to trigger a fault in the control system by pulling this down. There's the PLC and the train goes along its way. Hi, I'm Monte and welcome to the next exciting episode of Coke and Strippers, where you always get the full Monte. And today I'm going to take you to a secret undisclosed location where some friends and me built an industrial style train control system. You'll see what a control system looks like when you want to use industrial quality equipment instead of an Arduino and spend $10,000 instead of 10. So this is the brains of the operation. This is an Allen Bradley uh, Micrologix 1500 PLC. That's a programmable logic controller. This is pretty much like an Arduino for the industrial world. This PLC has various inputs. The inputs are up here. Uh, generally it's looking for 24 volts, those are opto-isolated inputs, and it's got outputs down here. Uh, generally these are dry contact relays, so uh, no voltage, they just open and close a relay, you provide all the in and out for that. And you can see the state of them over here, I'm going to reach up here and trigger a sensor by hand, and you should see that light come on. It takes a fair amount of setup to run uh, this this power plant and train and so forth. We've got 24 volts. We've got the PLC. We've got 5 volts. We got 14 volts AC and that's not even including the AC that runs the actual train. And we have this very cute little steampunk kind of control system that we actually use to uh, get it started and set the different parameters along the way. Hey, I wonder what this one does. Oh, there's also this box here that I'm kind of proud of, but basically it just opto isolates the outputs from some of the sensors, rectifies it, smooths it out, and triggers a relay so that the input looks nice and smooth. And I 3D printed this little box for it with a train on the outside. <laughs> this is the other end of the train setup. We have more I.O. Uh, for the PLC. This is run across device net. Uh, and we have some Phoenix contact blocks with their power, 24 DC, 14 AC, 5 DC, uh, and this is their 24 volt uh, DC power supply. Oh, and another one of the converter boxes that I built with a little train on it. Maybe we can see this one a little better. All right, let's get this party started. We'll activate the train here. Uh, it's picking a direction based upon changing the voltages on the track off and on. The train comes up to here. This is the coal tipple. At this point, you'll see this light come on. Uh, it's triggered to stop because of this infrared sensor, which detects the position of the train, and the program logic controller knows to turn on the tipple light. When it gets filled up, it heads back for the power plant. This is a power plant back on this end. At this end, what you see is it's uh, changing the voltage on the track again to decouple the connector on the back of the train. That way it can leave the cars here on the back side and it comes all the way through up here up until this uh, station where we see it's doing a little uh, car repair, rail car repair shop to do its scheduled maintenance. When it's done, it heads back to pick up the cars that are in the power plant. And away we go. This time we're gonna trigger a fault in the control system by pulling this down. There's the PLC. And the train goes along its way. It's looking for this rail car repair shop for some scheduled maintenance. But because of the failure, this sensor there won't trigger. Oh no, it busts out the other side and runs into the building. What are we gonna do? One of the things we added to add a little more sense of urgency was this guy here at the end who might get run over. Uh, also, you might be able to just barely see wisps of smoke coming out of this building, which is kind of cool. Um, one of the things that I'm especially proud of is, is the paint. So, uh, this, is, this is the way the buildings came. It's a very kind of flat, uh, glossy, sort of plasticky looking paint. But I had the opportunity to do a little weathering on some of these. So, this was that same very flat, glossy paint. And uh, we added some, some texture, some depth, some, some age to it. That, that, that makes it a little better. Uh, a particular offender was this coal tipple because this stuff here was a bright, bright, shiny green. So we gave it a really hard weathering look. Uh, we added a little wrinkle or two to the tin. 
uh, so that you can see that this cold tipple has been out there for a while. They generally don't get a lot of repair and generally look kind of, uh, you know, kind of well worn and of course covered with coal. This is a device that's actually used in the power industry. This is an SEL Schweitzer Engineering Laboratory power quality and revenue meter. We're using that to show the actual currents in use by the train system. Up here is the current currently in use by the engine, followed by, uh, oops, now we went to voltage, but this is the engine uh, track voltage and this is the voltage for the town. Oh, true power factor. We could charge both the train and the town based upon their energy usage monitor here. Here we have a Basler uh, overcurrent relay. This is part of what the, protects the power grid. If there's too much power uh, on a line, instead of having it melt, burn to the ground, or so forth, it will disconnect the power. Here, let's show, the, let, let's show how this works. This copper wire art project I made is gonna simulate a tree branch. So if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, wait a minute. So, this overcurrent relay protects these lines and what it'll do is it'll give about a half a second of overcurrent to see if, if, if it disappears, if it clears itself, and then it'll trip off the lines to protect them. And in this case, uh, tripping off the power plant as well and we hear the power plant alarm. Now this is also a recloser. It's going to try after a few seconds to turn the power back on to see if the fault has cleared itself because some of these faults are what we call self-clearing. Like a squirrel gets on the power lines, self-clearing. It self-clears. It's amazing. Finally, I'd like to say thanks to all of you who've subscribed to my channel and who've shared it with a friend or maybe an enemy. Anyway, I hope you had fun. I know I did. I made it myself out of copper wire.